word hedge is a Hebrew word. It means to surround with a fence or a wall to protect, to set anyone in trouble, in distress or danger, in a safe place. How many say, Lord, thank you for the wall that's around this house. Thank you, Lord. Can you hear that? And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a place to keep out the enemies of the vineyard, the flock, the city, and the house. Rock City Church, be of good courage. We have been that hedge to protect this region. We must fill in the gap next. So we've been the hedge. Now, over battle after battle, there's some gaps in the hedge. And so the gaps mean a rupture or a breach. This is a military reference. It's a picture of the enemy who rushes into a city through the breaches in a wall. They would work on a specific spot and rush it with a unified assault till it broke open. These special soldiers were called gap fillers and, and are gap standing soldiers, they called them, and they were seen as heroes amongst all the others. How many of you know when I was doing the radio broadcast the other day, the man that did it said to me off air, then he said it on air, he said, Bishop, this city owes you a favor. He said, because you have stood all these years and you stood for something and you stood against something and it's always been clear. Come on, saints. Do you know there are people around the world? I'll go to a meeting this week in Texas. That conference will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of pastors and leaders from all over the world. And I'll be there part of it and all that kind of stuff. And when I go there, there are people that will come and say, Bishop, thank you. Your church has inspired us. There are churches, how many of you ever heard of the Dream Center? That came about when the father of the young man that started it read my first book, called me in my office and said, is this you? Are you the author? Yes. Did you write the book? Yes. Brother, I'm here to tell you I'm stealing the book. I'm taking out of what's in it and I'm going to use it to start a place to reach people who are destitute. Come on, saints. Yeah. And look, we, we, you know, when, you, when you're in the battle and you're, you're a warrior, it ain't time for medals. Yeah. When I die, I give the medals to my wife or give them to my children. Ain't time for medals because there's still a battle going on. And too many people are trying to line up to get their new medal or to get their medals polished. There's a war going on in this city to destroy a generation of young black men. And the devil wants to destroy them so they don't have a chance to be all they could potentially be. And he wants to destroy those in Chicago and around this nation. And he wants to bring the church into an apostolic place. But instead, he bring, the, the enemy has brought us into a careless lazy, apathetic place instead of standing in the gap. Look what it says about this. Psalm 106, verse 23. So he said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the gap before him to keep his wrath from destroying the people. In the breach is the same word for gap. How do you hear that? Yes. Moses had the audacity. What kind of man stands in front of God, between God and his people, and says, God, kill me first? Yeah. Moses? Moses, get out of there. <laughs> That's a serious dude. He stood in there, he stood in the gap. That's what intercession is. Some of you have already checked out. You're worried about your meal today. 
I pray you get out there and you get all that you can eat. But I want you to know something. It's more than food and drink. It's righteousness, peace, and, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There's a kingdom of God that is alive today. And people around the world are embracing it. And they're fighting the good fight. And we are in the middle of a fight. And we need to fight like we've never fought. We need to stand like we've never stood. We need to use the weapons of God like we've never used them before because God put somebody up on this hill to hold back the darkness. Ezekiel 13, 5. Ezekiel 13, 5. It says, <laughs> close the door, close the gap in the day of the Lord. Ezekiel 32 in the NIV, Ezekiel 32, 10 and 11. You can put it on the, on the board. Ezekiel 32, 10 and 11. Look at these scriptures. They're full. They're all over. You have not gone up to the breaches in the wall to repair it for the people of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. You know, we need to get our, 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 our breaches uh, fixed up, the gaps closed in. But we need to put the hedge together. I need to make sure the hedge is strong so that God's purpose can be fulfilled. Let me tell you this. The purpose of God is bigger than you. Yeah. It's bigger than me. It will, last, it will outlast me times, times. I have a picture on the wall, and it's the only thing in here that's mine. And when I die, that picture will go. Because it's about a people understanding we're not a church that sits on its and sits around to be coddled and sits around to be uh, stroked uh, and deal with all your political correctness. It's a church that's called to a battle to stand in the gap and make up the hedge and say, no, you can't have this generation of black young men and women. My God, it put me here to stand in the gap and pray until. That's why our men's home had 14,000 men. 52 beds a night. Hello. That's why our girls' home at one time had over 1,200 babies born there. Why? Because God put us on this hill. And today we find ourselves having to coddle people and go, well, we don't want to be too busy. We don't want to uh, clog up your little perfect little schedule and make it so that you don't have all the little things you want. Listen to me. We'll have all the glory we need when we get there. But right now we have an assignment. Yeah. And our assignment will outweigh our pleasures. Yeah. And we're going... To celebrate. Courage counts when you rise up. I love this. It's a quote. Whenever you determine to lay claim to the Father's counsel as opposed to the adversary's counsel, you'll find that earth can have what heaven already has decided on. Amen. Every great battle has had a people who rose up in courage of their faith, standing in the new armor of that battle to guarantee victory with a lasting results. You know what, saints? Thank God for those men, boys, who died for World War II and World War I. Thank God for those Jewish people who broke loose and had that, that war there in 1948-49 that, that gave Israel its land. Thank God for people over the, all these times have stood up for something. Look, if you want to read in Ezekiel, you'll see that the reason Turkey is moving towards being an aggressor is because the Bible said they would. We need to come back to believe in the Bible before we believe CNN. The lyingest group that's ever been on the earth. It's a collection of deviant people with a twisted motive. Hello. I'm not calling them fake. 
I'm just calling them empty. That's why every airport has them. And they can't get out of the contracts. Because the propaganda has to be get it in the minds of all the people so they only believe one thing. Yeah. building of hedges for 36 years on this mountain has left us with gaps at times but the next man up mentality has prevailed so the, the, the enemy is trapped and destroyed as the church prays and fills the gap then God said he'll give us keys if we get the hedge the hedge and the gap fill is for the church. Here's what we get when we get all of that secure because we get strong. Then he says, I'll give you the keys, yeah. the keys of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's why he said in Matthew, <clears throat> and, and, and it tells us, you know, the, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Yeah. See, God's given us keys to the keys of the city to understand. Look, look what it says. Genesis 22. I'm closed. Genesis 22. 2217, your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. Your children will possess the gates of their enemies. It's a promise. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed. You know, I look at Elijah coming, just passed away. He's been a friend for us. He's helped us with our houses we give away every year. We give away a brand new home every year. He helps us with us. He, he was a good friend. He was just with us in May in his wheelchair. And he gave me his card and said, Bishop, I want to come to your church. I thank God for you. I thank God for what you do. I'm not here to belittle the man, but I'm here to say this. There's nothing to follow behind it. If we don't see the righteous, for if the righteous fail, what do the people do? Hello? Shh. And then he says this, and I say it to you, and through your offspring all nations of the earth will be blessed because you've obeyed my voice, he said. God said it there in Genesis, because you obeyed my voice. All nations will be blessed. That's why we have a good root for 36 years. And the only reason, and we've stood against every kind of poverty spirit mindset. We have stood when I didn't know the next week how I was going to pay a bill. We have stood and wondered, how are we going to pay? How are we going to buy? How are we going to get? And somehow, somewhere, God does, somebody calls and says, hey, and there's money over here and over there. I didn't know how we were going to pay for a home for men to have 14,000 men in that home. But all of a sudden, they gave me a check for $351,000, and then they gave me a check every year for $480,000, and then they gave me another check for $375,000, and all of a sudden, we had $17 million came in. Hello? I don't wring my hand. I don't come to you. I just go and pray and say, oh, God, <laughs> what am I going to do? We built this building. The bank foreclosed on us from being able to roll it over to a permanent loan. Not because of, we did anything. They just decided to drop all churches. Provident Bank. We had our lawyers get in all, oh, what are we going to do? No, oh, it is. It's written right in there. Well, you dumb lawyers, you should have seen it. So they penalized us every month. $150,000 penalty. Every month. <laughs> so now I have a school and this building. And I got to pay 300 and some thousand a month. See, you're looking and going, oh. See, you don't know where I stay. I have to stay and pray so you get a nice cushy seat to sit in. 
And so you have a Bible school to go to that don't pay its bill. But I invested as a missionary. Hello? And all of a sudden, we are, all we're busy about is who isn't sitting in what seat today? Who's not somewhere? That's a gap. Fill it up. Because the enemy wants to come in through the gap. When people desert, when people are deserters, they leave the army. When they leave, they leave the army vulnerable. And the word that God gave me was this. Stop looking at confused people changing directions without inquiring of God or his prophets and begin to rise up and fill the gap. If you fill the gap, the enemy can't get in. And that way we keep building and we, it's, you know, the football teams, they have a thing called next man up. Drew Brees gets his hand hurt. The guy goes in, he's doing awesome. Next man up. They got rid of Flacco, Flacco, Flacco. <laughs> Brought in this skinny little kid that didn't know how to do anything. He looked like rubber man. Yeah. Next man up. Yeah. Have you say, Lord, I want to be part of the company. Next man up. I got to get in and stand in the gap. Stop sitting back criticizing. Stop sitting back and judging. Why don't you get in the gap, shut your mouth, and begin to worship God. Take out your weapons and intimidate the devil. And watch him build a church that nobody has ever seen before. That will turn this region upside down and cause something to happen beyond the wildest dream we could ever have. Because we decided to get a part, be a part of a covenant thing that built hedges build it filled in gaps and just do the devil trouble every day can you hear me or sit back and just whine and complain and you'll join the host of those that stand on the sidelines and they're gone and then they'll wonder, why am I being, why am I going through this? And why? How come I'm changing jobs again and again and again? Why is that? <laughs> Get a picture, saints. There's an assignment. I'm not here because I like Baltimore. I fish in a sewer pipe called the Chesapeake Bay. Where I fished, I could see the bottom. Mm -hmm. I can't even see my fish when they come up. Yeah. And now we got to throw them back because they got sores on them. Mm -hmm. Hello, I don't want to come here. Yes, but God said, that's my assignment. Mm -hmm. yeah. When does this become your assignment? Yeah. Instead of just your observation. Stand in the background and peek at it. While this nation is destroyed. While somebody was killed this week, every weekend. How many more kids? Hello. You know, Chicago's got a, bro a big problem. I go up there and preach. I got friends that are preachers there. And do you know what's the problem? There are 1,000, 1,500, 1,800 churches mm -hmm. in Chicago. And they're more interested on the choice of which restaurant to go to than they are about God doing something to change who they are. Yeah. Yeah. So they can stand in the gap, make up the hedge, yeah. and bring about a restoration mm -hmm. and reformation of God back to America. If you're here today, how many of you say with me, it's time. Yeah. It's time we come next weekend and celebrate. Yeah. It's time. There's some victory, saints. We got victory here. We got some of you that hide and want to stay home and you flirt with this thing. You're never going to know what victory tastes like. It's sweet.
sweet to the soldier. Amen. Especially if you lost a limb or an arm, a leg. There's nothing like it. Stand to your feet. Father, I thank you today. I pray, Lord, right now for this church. I pray for what you're doing in this church. Thank you, Lord. Growing churches, growing churches focused on reaching receptive people. Non growing churches focus on re enlisting inactive people. Which is it? Look what it says. Growing churches focus on reaching receptive people. Non growing churches focus on re enlisting inactive people. How many of you would say with me, Here am I, Lord? Like, like Isaiah? Yeah. How many know in your lifetime you only have a few opportunities to, to belong to something that has an, a genuine effect and makes a difference? Yeah. Our men's home that we had 14,000 men in, at the time we had it operating for 21 years, it was the number one on the entire East Coast of having a success rate. The New York centers and places like that were less than 1%. Our home, Mel was on the board, others were here on the board, our home for men was between 68 and 72% successful. Chris, you were in there. That's how successful that home was. Men came in and today, I had a meeting here last year, a bunch of sons came over about five or six of them, knuckleheads, and they were hugging on me, laughing, because they just stopped by to say, thank you, Bishop. And every one of them had all been drug addicts. They were all a mess. George, ha George uh, Hainsworth and uh, Irvin and KC, and all these guys. I drug them out of the hell they were in. I mean, they said... You're our dad. I said, if I'm your dad, come home, you knucklehead. <laughs> Thank God for assignment. Amen. Not every church gets an assignment. Amen. Do you know some churches will close this year, next year coming, and nobody will even know they're closed? They'll close and nobody will even know it. And in about people knowing it from a publicity standpoint, it's about, can you feel the difference? Can you feel the environment change? When you take a strategic prayer center like this church out of this region, I'll tell you, saints, I don't want to live here. I've had Mayor O'Malley took me to his home Mayor O'Malley, Governor O'Malley told me this, that when we fasted and prayed and laid hands on him several years ago in his office and we declared a week of prayer and fasting, he said publicly on television, crime in Baltimore dropped 35% in that week. Let's talk to God for a minute. Father, we thank you today. Lord, I've delivered what you told me. I, I've spoken as clear as I could, Lord. Not apologetically, not, not whining, but I spoke as you told me to speak. And Lord, we saw what you did here Friday night. There's an army in this house. There's an army of warriors in this house. They're intercessors. Uh, there are those that know how to pray and want to learn how to pray. And there are those that are going to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Uh, and they're not going to be buffeted and tricked and tricked by the enemy, but they're going to push. They're going to push back against the wiles of the devil. They're going to push back against darkness. Uh, they're not going to be intimidated. They're not going to follow the crowd uh, and just be the socialites uh, and have their little house uh, and their little this and their little that. They're going to be warriors. They're going to decide, I'm going to make a difference. Uh, I'm going to do something to change uh, the culture I'm in. Uh, and when I die, I want to leave a mark that I was here. Does the devil know you're even here? And will he know that you were here when you died? Will there be a mark left? 
that the enemy will be able to realize that because you were here, you stopped him from doing this or that. You kept him from doing this or that. You stopped him. Maybe you stopped him from taking your own children. God, raise up intercessors. Raise up prayer warriors. Raise up a people that will pray together. Raise up this church to be a light on top of a hill, a city that cannot be hid. God, raise up a people in this house that will be those warriors that refuse to be intimidated by those that are half-baked, half-committed, and falling around all over the place and don't know what God is doing. But God, raise up a people so dynamited and so dangerous to the works of the devil that, God, you will give them favor. You will give them anointing. You will give them protection. You will give them blessing and you will use them. You will use them to change the culture of our nation, our city. Bring revival to America. Thank you for watching Rock City Church Online. We pray this video sharpens and encourages you to be all that God has called you to be. You can give online at rockcitychurch.com or on the Rock City Church app. Like and share us on social media at Rock CC Baltimore. And subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode or live stream.